Hey, thank you for joining in uh, this commandment number eight in our series going through how to create strong families and 10 values that create strong people that build strong families. And so we're on commandment number eight. Uh, you shall not steal. <laughs> you must not steal. Now, I've said this the last few weeks. I really, I really anticipated this would be a lot easier. These commandments are really uh, getting right where we live. And don't you think that the creator who made us, he made the hard drive. For some of us, it's probably harder than for others. But he created the hard drive. He understands how we operate. And I think these 10, if we keep these 10, they encompass so much, it'll take care of everything. We couldn't keep them. And so in the New Testament, he said, if you'll just keep these two, it'll take care of everything. The two, that's the greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Love God with all your heart and then love your neighbor as yourself. So it shows us it's a matter of the heart. It's so simple. It's right there before us. But you know, isn't it always that the simple things in life are sometimes the most overlooked and forgotten, glazed over or glanced past? So I want to just drill in and go through this. Now, I've reminded you that um, if you would text 97,000, my next yes, you can get the notes, the full notes. You can, uh, you can go to uh, the full messages and get that there. Uh, I'm not going through the whole thing today. I want to really land on how to be a person of integrity. So we talked about in part one, and we covered this in our Sunday message, how do we steal? And so we talked about the different ways, deceiving customers, and man, these verses are powerful. I encourage you to go back and look at those. We do it by defrauding employers, by delaying payments. Uh, man, these just hit us, and they're verses to back all of this up. Number four, by defrauding loans. Fifthly, by deceiving the government. And sixth, by defrauding the Lord, by robbing from God. So we talked about that. How, how can we rob God? And it would seem impossible to find heaven's checkbook, heaven's bank account. But God said it is possible. Will a man rob God in Malachi 3? And yet God said, you're robbing me. But you ask, and here's a logical question. How, how are we robbing you, God? And God says, by withholding tithes and offerings. Again, it's a matter of of the heart because where your treasure is Jesus said it there your heart will be also I often illustrate this uh, in our new members class I ask, I ask how many of you know what happened to Coca-Cola stock this week I've never had anyone raise their hand yet but I said do you think if you had a thousand shares of Coca-Cola stock you might know what's happening with it everyone always says yes because where your treasure is your heart follows, your attention follows. That's why Jesus said, lay not up for yourself treasures on earth where moth can corrupt it and man can steal it. That's what we're talking about, stealing. He said, but lay up your treasure in heaven because where your treasure is, your heart is going to be pulled there. Oh, that, oh, that we would get this right, that our hearts would be set on God that I would love him more than I love anything in this world. Oh, that I may love you more, God, and that I may love you better. You know, there's so much to, to distract us here, to steal our time, to steal our affection, to steal our attention. And ultimately, it's all about trying to steal our heart. That's why Jesus said the thief came to steal kill and destroy. I've always wondered what that meant, the thief came to steal. But do you know what he came to steal? He came to steal from you. He came to steal from me. He came to steal your heart, your affection, your time, your focus, your attention. Because if he can steal my heart, my time, my affection, my attention, my focus, he has the soul of me and that thief has then really taken our focus from God. So, oh, why should we be honest? That's, that's part two of, of our notes. Why should we be honest? 
Why should we be honest? I need, I need windshield wipers with my eyes because I'm being watched by God. You know, the Bible says, I love this verse in Job 34, God carefully watches the goings on of all mankind. He sees them all. No darkness is thick enough to hide evil men from God's eyes. God sees the men or the ladies who did you wrong, who hurt you. He takes good records. He sees that. God sees it all. So I want to be honest in little things and big things. Man, this hit us hard yesterday. Last night, Kirby, remind me, I need to close with that story. I'll close with that story maybe. Last night, cleaning out my Toomey backpack. I'll try to land right there. I will reap whatever I sow is the second reason. And we use Galatians 6, don't be misled. Remember, a man will always reap the kind of crop he sows. Proverbs 15, try to make a profit dishonestly and you'll get your family in trouble. Proverbs 21, dishonest gain will never last. So why even take the risk? And then dishonesty damages my character. That was the third reason to be honest because dishonesty, it damages us. It eats away at the core of who we are. And then fourthly, God will reward my honesty. God rewards honesty. I told the story uh, yesterday in the message um, about me doing the right thing and sending a large sum of money that I didn't really have to the attorney had made a faux pas and it, it, it ended up costing me in the end, but I did what was right. And then I realized after that, and I, I don't know that I've put this together, but I did with my staff today in a staff meeting. I said, you know, this blessing over here may have never come to me if I had not done what was right here. Because when I did what was right, it was after walking out of that bank, I called my mentor and he prophesied to me and said, thus says the Lord, because you have done this, you're going to make this in a large real estate transaction. I didn't even, I, I was not doing anything in real estate uh, at that point. I'd have to think back, but certainly not doing uh, real estate at that level that I could even think real or estate. But that prophecy came to me from doing what was right. So God rewards our integrity. So here are the first steps to integrity. Number one, make restitution when possible. If you can make restitution and get it right, then get it right. Luke 19, Zacchaeus said to Jesus, if I have cheated anyone, I will pay him back four times as much. And Jesus said in verse nine, salvation has come to this man's house. Because when you get right, you want to get it right. The second step to walking in integrity or getting it right, the second step is to give God my full tithe. Why is that? Because where my treasure is, that's where my heart is. It's a, it's a, it's a part of giving Him my heart. If I can get right with, I'm going to call it my money, but it's really not my money. It's God's. And when we get that part right, then I realize I'm really just a steward. It's his checkbook, it's his money. I'm just stewarding it right. Well, checkbook, I'm gonna date myself. Probably in a few years, we'll all be doing everything by the cell phone or the wrist, or maybe we're not gonna go there with a chip, but that's, that's where some of it's going. But I'm just managing, I'm the manager. Don't get distracted on end time. Let's stay with this one, thou shalt not steal. But give God my full tithe. God's watching everything and he loves you. I made this statement, God has more promises about giving than any other thing in the Bible. Is it right for a person to cheat God? One translation said, of course not. He said, bring the full amount of your tithes to the temple and I will pour out on you in abundance. I want God's abundance. I want God's grace. I want God's favor. Amen. I hope you're saying an amen right now. And if you can't say it out loud, say it in your heart. And then lastly, and I'll close here, make a living honestly. Make a living honestly. Putting in a hard day work for a, a good day of pay, being involved in careers and things that are treating people right. Just be honest. Make money honestly so that you can live with a clear conscience at night. Ephesians 4 says, the man who used to be a thief must give up stealing and do an honest day's work 
with his own hands. The Bible says that no dishonest person will be allowed into heaven. So be involved in a career and in making a living and do that in an honest way. If you're a plumber, treat people fairly. If you're a carpenter, if you're a car dealer, if you're a car repairman, if you're a banker, if you're a loan originator, do I need to name them all? You get the point. Whatever it is you do, do it with all your might, Paul said, and do it as unto the Lord. Oh God, that we may be honest in all our dealings. I'll close with this story. Yesterday, the fastening apparatus on the backpack that I've had for several years went bad, so I took it to the store. It's a Tumi leather backpack, and I've had it for a long time. Took it to the store, and so I had to clean out my backpack. What I didn't remember or realize, cleaning out a backpack that you've been carrying for a long time is almost like getting rid of a car that you've had for years and you have stuff in the glove box and stuff in the armrest. Come on, can I get an amen out there? Stuff in the side pockets. Come on, somebody, stuff in the trunk. Then you have a little bag in the trunk. And if you're driving a Tesla, you got a little bag in the front. And so we have stuff everywhere. So I had to clean out my, my Tumi backpack. Well, they gave me a, a bag to put all my stuff in. So I got home, went through that, and I found a a little, uh, a not a receipt, but a statement, a, bill, a billing statement for some uh, detailing work that I had done. And the, I didn't look at the date, but it was probably in 23 sometime, maybe the end of 23. And I thought as I saw that, I'm not sure that I paid that or not. So the devil jumped up on my shoulder and said, well, you don't have to pay that. If you didn't pay it, they would have sent you another invoice. That's the word I'm looking for, invoice. But then I heard my own preaching and I thought, man, I just want to do what's right. So guess who I've got to contact and make sure if that was paid or not, because I want to do it right. Lord, help us to be right. Help, help your favor and blessing to be on us. I want to bless you with rightness, with right living, with a clear conscience, with the blessing and favor of God. Let's just pray that right now. Father, Cleanse our heart, cleanse our mind of all uncleanness and unrighteousness and let us get it right. Let us live lives of integrity and character that our hearts be right on you. We don't want to let them feel anything from us. Our focus, our, our heart, our love, our devotion, our attention, our affection. I want it all to be right where it should be, Lord. So cleanse us now. Come on, just pray this with me right there in your heart. You don't. You can pray out loud, but you can pray in your heart with me. Lord, cleanse me. Forgive my mind, my spirit, my heart. Forgive any sins I've committed. Forgive any, anything right that I should have done that I've not done. Cleanse me and wash me and forgive me and make me clean. I really want to be right. I want your blessing on me and my family and all that I do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say a good amen in your heart at least. I bless you. May God bless you and keep you and cause his face and favor to shine upon you. May God grant you peace. May his favor be on all that you do. And whatever you do, do it with all your might as unto the Lord and do it with integrity. I bless you, bless you, bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Have a great discussion now. And thank you for going through uh, Commandment 8. I love you and bless you in Jesus' name.